Hello everyone and welcome back to a Hearts of Iron 4 Dev Diary. Today we're going to be talking about a new patch that's going to be releasing on open beta the second this Dev Diary video has dropped. So if you're watching this, the open beta will definitely be out in preparation for a full release of a new Hoi 4 update coming the week after. In it, we're going to be seeing some changes to peace conferences and how the mechanics work with that as well as some changes to focus trees in the Balkans and some tiny updates all over the place. In our news, we also have a dev diary to go through, which is talking about upcoming changes to career profiles, uh, multiplayer, how it interacts with that, and some challenges you can get in that field. So without further ado, let's jump in. So as we can see, we, we are kind of left with a, a small looking dev diary. Um, it ends right there, but it is of course a uh, not true because the real dev diary is inside these spoilers. So let's start with the patch notes. So the patch notes start by talking about features and there is one core feature at the center of this patch and that is to do with how the peace score or previously known as war score I guess same difference is going to be distributed. For easy and very easy difficulties, AI countries will transfer a part of their peace score to the human player slash players, meaning that hopefully you should be getting a far more, let's say, healthier chunk. If you're playing on a slightly easier difficulty, maybe you need that, although I'm pretty sure they're not achievement compatible, so not necessarily exploitable. In addition, there are going to be three big new game roles that you can interact with. Um, puppets will now transfer a part of their peace score to their overlord, so Canada, um, South Africa, India, or give some score to their Britain. Uh, faction members will transfer a part of their peace score to the faction leader, which in many cases could be Britain, it could be Germany, or it could be the Soviets, assuming that America hasn't overtaken the Allies, meaning that everybody in those factions will help the main uh, people get their war score. And countries with a low war participation score will transfer all their peace score to the other countries. The last one being particularly damaging if really small countries who had very specific claims might be slightly edged out of those claims. Not necessarily sure if that relates to AI exclusively or if a player playing as let's say Liberia, Luxembourg and let's say just a smaller country is now going to lose their war participation as a player. It doesn't necessarily say. The final note is that all of these are going to be disabled by default, so none of these are actually true in standard game, although it is not stated whether they are going to be achievement compatible. If they are going to be achievement compatible, then I'll say that this is definitely a room for <laughs> some exploitation uh, with like puppets, by creating lots of puppets with lots of ability to attack, and then making sure you can stack it all up, or making like a mega faction such as Poland and Midzimorje. Since we don't know for sure, and this is of course open beta, keep an eye on that space, see what happens, and if it seems too broken one way or the other, I'm sure feedback will be listened to. So moving on to balance, pressure of the Balkans has been rebalanced slightly, so the modifiers now scale as the spirit is upgraded. I don't recall how the spirit could be upgraded, but I guess that could be a change in the overall structure of the focus tree, because there are more changes with Bulgaria, for one, they are now getting the Mountaineers tech immediately, and there is a National Railway Lines focus with a reduction from 70 days to 35 days. Two mutually exclusive focuses will come after this, choosing between Aluminium, 16, or Gold Deposits for stability and sieves. So zooming over to the wonderful world of Bulgaria, we can of course go to the focus tree and see that uh, pressure of the Balkans here, so pretty good buffs on it now. It'll be interesting to see how they scale in the long run, as well as over here with National Railway Lines, which of course currently 70 days, it's going to get an upgrade, and they're going to squeeze two mutually exclusive focuses in here. So uh, maybe this branch is going to be pushed slightly to the left to fit that all in. Moving further down, we see that Romania will have several new focuses added, which enable the possibility to manipulate which country leader will run the fascist party. Um, I, there's no background for me to be able to say what these focuses are going to look like, but hey, more options to do with Romania is not a negative thing, especially with the whole Balkans dominance powerhouse they have. And lastly, there's some changes to how countries that have aircraft carriers are going to prioritize making fighters for those aircraft carriers, because, um, well, we don't want cosmetic aircraft carriers now, do we? UI. 
they have fixed various issues with the tech tree on different resolutions, which is good for people who aren't necessarily playing at, I guess, 1080, 1920 or whatever. In addition, Bulgaria's default UI color, which is used for its allegiance and country unit banners, is now the same as their starting country color, as well as some changes to social media buttons. Let's quickly look at that in its current form. So here we are looking at Bulgaria just to check the difference. Now, as you can see in the current format, yes, Bulgaria is green and the units are green. But if we go down here and click toggle unit color between countries or allegiance, uh, <laughs> Romania is looking pretty yellow. Yugoslavia is looking with that kind of bluey purple. Greece, very light blue. Bulgaria, purple, <sniffs> kind of a purpley pink. Uh, definitely the outlier. So I guess that's going to be fixed. In the AI, we find some changes to how the AI focuses on land doctrines, construction queues, how it works on its naval bases, as well as Italy being much less active on the French front for the first months of the war. Um, so I guess the Italians aren't going to be as aggressive trying to push through the Alps. Oh, and also the USO Colorado class battleship is now obsolete. I guess, I guess it was just considered too cringe to keep in mainland production. We can fly through modding by just stating that they've added some new um, variables and parameters for you to interact with, such as add is hired as advisor or um, get supply vehicles or get supply vehicles temp effects, um, different triggers, things you can use to check for certain things if you're in the modding scene. And finally, to wrap up the things that are happening inside of this new open beta, perhaps these ones are also kind of interesting, um, if not a little obscure, bug fixes. Improved requirement tooltips for Mare Nostrum decision. So I don't think this is changing the decision. I think it's going to be the same. I just think the tooltips that tell you how to do it are going to be slightly clearer. Random country selection disabled when loading Ironman saves. So if any of you were using the little bug you could do, where if you had an Ironman save, you quit out the game, you loaded the game, you could actually spam the button to find a random country you're playing as, uh, or not playing as, to select them, delete all their units, and then tag back to the one you were originally using. It was a, a bit of a cheat, yeah. We have fixes for 1938 engines and armor techs. Um, here's an interesting one. Bulgaria's unit names now use the spelling of de, what is that, Divizia from Divizia, <laughs> but also a little bit further down, a reverting of Bulgaria's unit names now use the spelling. So did they use it or did they revert it? I couldn't tell you. Germany's no longer getting twice the amount of research bonus from the treaty with the USSR. Some aircraft bomb tech now unlocks torpedoes. Fixes for the Swiss flag. And also going to be some fixes for the templates of aircraft and subsequent consequences for operatives getting spotted on offensive missions. That will wrap up everything that I think will be in the open beta. Overall, it looks like we're getting some generally speaking, good changes. It's going to be interesting to see how, if the interactions with the peace score with between puppets and faction members could really impact the game, especially with you really wanting to be a faction leader so you don't get screwed out of a peace deal, could be a thing. And also looking to see what those new Romania and Bulgaria focuses look like, and if they're going to open up some really more interesting ways to play the game, specifically with Romania, because we don't really get too much information about that. So who knows what it could entail. Well, 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 hello to all of you who may or may not have just come from patch notes. We reached the developer diary and in, we are going to be talking about the career profile with In Ingevar. I have probably butchered their name. I am sorry. So the opening is talking about more stats and awards. Specifically, for all of you who may, myself included, have tried to get as many badges and medals as you can, there are going to be new badges and medals for you to strive for, including new ways of getting them. So previously, they said that they focused on warfare mostly, but this time they added some that cover economy, production, and recruitment aspects of the game. So it's not necessarily about the victories you're getting in the war, but how well you're preparing to go to war, how well you're getting ready to go to war. A personal favourite that is given specific attention is the Orchestra of Boom, which requires you to create a division with anti-tank, anti-air, artillery, rocket artillery, and a support signal group. So basically about creating as much explosive ordnance in a single division as possible. Since we're here, we can kind of look at some of the other things that are going on, as well as the change to the UI. It's looking pretty colourful with the uh, medals and um, ribbons at the top, but we can see that as my cursor comes in, this particular uh, ribbon isn't that difficult to do. Um, just 
design the division. I think you could do that very early on. Deploy over 4,000 tanks with a max speed over 12 kilometers per hour. So that's going to be some really good light tanks, but getting 4,000 of them, well, that's quite a few divisions you're going to have to get out. Build more than 10 rocket sites. Well, that's kind of going to be a slightly more late game challenge, but it is easier to do because it doesn't require any particular tactful skill. You just need to research the tech and build them. In the next screenshot, we see the Thousand Year Bond. Deploy 100 cavalry or cavalry battalions. Um, I mean, I think with real skill, you have to do this with camels, don't you? I mean, not spamming out 100 camels just is an insult to the achievement, frankly. Ruled by furniture, have no single person or set of people depicted to be in charge of your nation. Judging by the fact that there's an old English proverb as the hint, I feel like that's going to be, what is it, fallen government in the British when you go monarchist towards Edward VIII and the entire government resigns. So then you get ruled by furniture. I'm, I think that is what that one is implying. Although to be fair, in Poland, they do have the um, Regency Council, the Royal Sejm? Se Sejm? Sejm? Regardless, that involves being ruled by a single chair, so maybe both of them are eligible. I'll try and speed up for the rest. We've got gain over 30 units of rubber from artificial sources. I actually quite like those kind of challenges where you have to build up a really good economy. Um, it's one of the parts where I think that the game would really benefit if it had an option to do more... Um, structured trades. So instead of people randomly, like the AI randomly buying your stuff, you have like fixed trade deals with certain nations where you guarantee to have like five sieves for a certain amount of resources. That would be like a, how I think the economy could really work in this game. We have Rubber Baron, control at least 1,000 units of rubber and have a closed economy. Well, that's just, that, that's an Indonesia, Malaysia uh, destruction campaign, I think. And finally, I'll just mention Blitz This, because it talks about choosing elastic defense as preferred strategy on a general field martial law uh, country. I often forget to actually take advantage of the fact that you can specifically choose a strategy that you want your units to use more than any other. Um, really good with, like, if you've got a heavy focus on tanks and you want to make sure they're taking the specific uh, attack that you want them to. Further down, we see that some of the new medals will deliver, quote, a serious challenge, even for the more experienced players, such as quality over quantity, which requires you to have several times less casualties than the enemy after inflicting at least one million casualties. This feels like a, a Danzig or die moment kind of achievement, the difficult one from pa uh, ParadoxCon. In addition, there's also going to be more statistics coming to the career profile. So previously, they were perhaps a little bit barren on certain screens, but now there seems to be a significant greater amount of uh, statistics, including lots of things about specific aircraft production, tank production, ship production, and I'm sure there are many more screens you can look into after that on different sections of the game. The next section is called Awards Display. You can display your awards now, which is pretty good. I, I can't remember how that wasn't in before. The next section is awards display, because now you can display your awards. Kind of comes with the name, I suppose. Be a proud general with a couple of the best medals, or you can literally display everything. So it just depends what you want to do. I think probably displaying the really difficult ones to get is going to be the main way to go. I think this image here being the core presentation of how some medals can be shown, with the top left showing no medal because nothing has been selected, and some being selected over others, being brighter, etc. Heading into the more competitive sides of Hearts of Iron 4, which it seems like the game could be heading more in that direction as time goes on, you will now collect statistics in multiplayer too. Uh, awards are only for single player, but if you want to see how somebody's stats are in multiplayer, that is something you can see, um, which might contribute to people deciding who gets to play which country in certain lobbies. Are you still with us? I hope so, because next up we've got backgrounds, and this is this is where your inner Sims player comes into fruition. I don't want to hear any, we don't play the Sims, okay, you like designing your wallpapers, and this is the wallpaper designer of a lifetime. You get to choose a nice theme to go in the background next to your medals, so whoever clicks your profile is going to see the beautiful leaf or lines that you've associated with it. Maybe, maybe some stars. Very, very trendy. 
The final thing this needs is a is a CK free player. We've got the coat of arms, we've got like the nicknames, maybe we can have some motto, and then we have a design your own general, kind of like a CK free designer. Then you've got everything there. What is particularly cool and kind of reminds me of back when I used to play Halo is when you enter a multiplayer lobby, you'll actually be able to see the badge in the multiplayer lobby. Then if you want to see their profile, their stats, their awards, you can just click on the badge and see what's going on with them. So maybe moving from less of a basic multiplayer lobby menu, which was really just used to join everybody into the game and we were good to go. But now you also can use it as kind of a place to see who's who, see how well other players are compared to you, who's got some really hard stuff, who's got the good stuff. It's you've got more utility. And the final section is talking about stats comparison. So when viewing profiles of other players, you're able to compare your numbers to their numbers, which I'm sure would never result in any kind of competition or bitterness or toxicity. I, I could never imagine that. We're all just such kind and harmonizing people. Of course, if you do want to avoid that, you are able to uh, set your profile to private and nobody can see it. If you, if you don't want to, people staring at your profile. It's none of their business if you don't want it to be. And so that wraps up this particular dev diary, ending with Katten talking about appreciation for the suggestions and the bug reports that are coming in, which we have to be honest, are going to be the main thing fueling a lot of the change, a lot of the positive recommendations, things you want in the game. So if you do think there's something they've missed, maybe a bug, maybe something you think could be added to the profile, a stat in particular, then going on their forums is probably the best place to go. With that, I'll say that's all from me. The open beta should be out now, so go play it, go away, leave. And if this video is a week old or more, then it should be released in full. So shame on you. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching. If you liked, feel free to like, feel free to subscribe, and I guess I'll see you all next time.